from Pitlochry. 2013 is the 150th anniversary of the completion of the Highland Line, the railway which runs north from Perth. As soon as people were able to travel by train rather than horse-drawn carriage, they increasingly came north to enjoy the Highland scenery. The town of Pitlochry grew up to cater for these new visitors. Thousands of tourists still come to stay in the town's hotels and large houses each year. They come for a glimpse of the magnificent mountains and glens, the rich woodlands and the grand white castle at Blair Athol, just ten minutes up the line. All around you as you travel north on the Highland Line, you'll see hillsides swathed with big trees. These trees are the legacy of the Dukes of Athol. They owned much of this land, from Dunkeld in the south to the high mountain pass of Dromochter that you'll be travelling through in almost 30 minutes' time. Over a period of 100 years, between 1750 and 1850, the Athol family planted over 20 million trees. In doing so, they transformed much of their landscape of parks, farmlands and hillsides. And as those who work here today will tell you, the legacy of the tree-planting dukes is still a vibrant one. Polly Freeman is the ranger in the estate and understands its character. The land that you're travelling through used to all be part of Athol Estates. Athol Estates still exists today and it's one of the largest private estates in Scotland. But if we go back a few hundred years, it was even bigger than it is today. And wherever you look out of the train window would have been part of Athol Estates back in the 18th century. The early Dukes of Athol um, were very instrumental in planting these trees that you can see. So if you look around, the hills are swathed with woodland now, but they weren't back in those times. So back in the 18th century, Scotland was denuded of trees that had all been cut for building and so on. And it was really a very treeless place. And the second and fourth Dukes of Athol particularly were very strong on planting trees. And the fourth Duke um, planted over 18 million larch trees in the area that you're travelling through now. And really, he changed the look of Scotland. That was the start of kind of um, commercial forestry and planting trees on a big scale. So the, the forests are still here today, as you can see them. We still use them for growing timber, but they're also a great place to see wildlife, and there's some lovely walks and bike rides that you can do in them too. One of the trees that you'll notice, um, particularly in the spring and autumn, is the larch tree. The larch has got very strong associations with Athol Estates and with this area. Um, it's, a, it's a coniferous tree, so it has needles instead of leaves but it's very unusual in that it loses its needles every year, so it's a deciduous conifer. So in the winter it's bare. In the spring it regrows its needles, and if you're travelling in the spring you'll see the needles are bright green, beautiful bright green colour. And then in the autumn they turn an amazing yellow and orange colour, and then they drop off, so you get golden paths that are carpeted with um, these golden needles. The, the, the woodlands... Um, up here are really good for a red squirrel and the red squirrel's happy to live in the conifer woods the grey squirrel likes more the broadleaf woodlands the red squirrel's not that difficult to see around these parts quite used to people so if you fancy getting out and going for a walk they're, yeah they're not too hard to spot um, another thing that you'll often notice from the train are birds of prey buzzards are certainly the easiest to spot and they're very common up here now um, but you can see other things red kites are becoming more common in this area and there have also been white-tailed sea eagles reintroduced recently and so you can occasionally spot them soaring high up in the sky. Despite the Duke's passion for tree planting, there are areas that have not been completely changed. You'll notice the train slowing on its way through the Pass of Killycrankey. This picturesque river gorge is clothed in ancient woodland. It's stunningly beautiful later in the year when trees such as oak, ash, birch and hazel are decked in their autumn colours. These woodlands tend to be open and light, so they're richer in wildlife than the commercial plantings of trees like Norway spruce and lodgepole pine. Some of the moths and butterflies which live here have particularly striking names. There's the beautiful green hair streak butterfly, or the larch pug moth, whose name reflects its favoured habitat. But it's perhaps the Gaelic for butterfly that's even more evocative, Jalanjee, or God's lightning. <laughs> 